Happy Friday to all of you out there in social media world. This is Yes, Brother Dana coming to you from Chicago. Uh, as I normally like to do and give a special shout out to all of my true Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, those that know who you are, as well as those who um, do not know yet who you are and still uh, go under what we so-called blacks or African Americans. So if you fall in that so-called category, I want you to know that more than likely you are actually one of the true Hebrew Israelites. And knowing that gives uh, an understanding partly to what I also want to share at this moment. Um, and, and I know that uh, my Hebrew Israelites and so-called black family members are absolutely frustrated. Um, frustrated in the obvious um, distinction between justice to white America and so-called justice to our so-called black Americans. And the frustration, I know, has to come because... As Will Smith said so clearly, he said racism isn't getting worse, it's just getting filmed. And it's mind-boggling to try to understand how white America can still close their eyes or not see, not hear, not listen and deny that racism or white supremacy, white privilege injustice towards our so-called black family members is alive and living and breathing. And I can't say growing because it's always been a monster, but as Will Smith said, it's just being filmed. And yet through all of these in your face realities of the injustices, um, white America is still acting like Boo Boo the Fool. And I know that is frustrating because you would want to believe that when the truth is revealed, that the white America at one point would say, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Especially white America that says that I'm not racist. I, I love all colors of people. But when it comes down to the rubber hitting the road, they, they are liar. And, and I, I even posted... To back that up and to back up where I say all white Americans are racist, it's just the level of where they are in their racist mindset, you know, let's look at this film and, and this videotape that I put out there of a, a so-called black man that was out in his front yard picking up trash um, with a bucket and one of those long clamp things so you don't have to bend down and pick up the trash and touch it. And while he was doing that, a police officer came and asked him for his ID and, and put his hand on his gun, took out his taser. And then before it was over with, I would think there was six or other eight officers that were surrounding him. And, and what that makes me mad. But see, what even makes me more mad was, and I take that he was a white guy and I'm making a, a, um, uh, assumption on this, but the way that he was shouting and the way that he was staying in the house revealed to me that he must be a white man because a so-called black man, when they see that their brother is in need or is in harm's way, they themselves put them, them in harm's way to defend. And, and so it had to be a white man because he was standing inside the house shouting at the cops, this is my friend, he lives here, leave him alone. And, and that is the stuff that doesn't make me mad, it pisses me off because it goes back to show that there is an element of truth that white people who even say they're not racist, who love black people, will not yet put themselves in harm's way to defend you when it comes down to that. And so that just emphasizes or uh, solidifies when I say what I do that how can you say that a black man, so-called black man that is out in your front yard that is being harassed by police officers, that he's your friend and yet you're going to stay in the house <laughs> and film it so that you can remain safe. Guess what? You would never be my friend again.
So anyway, I'm bringing up what I'm going to bring because it just came to light that uh, uh, Jesse uh, Summit, and I may get his name wrong, uh, but was charged with eight, I believe it was eight, or maybe it was 16, 16 counts of felony charges for this one false report, per se, if it's true, um, about him being beaten up, which now means that he could spend 48 years in prison. And I know this is frustrating and the only way that I can make sense of this where racism and white privilege and white supremacy is being filmed and is being made so obvious, the only thing that helps me embrace this is it's not happening to change the minds of white, Gentile, evangelical America. But it's being revealed for this purpose. And Proverbs 24, verses 11 and 12 says, Rescue those who are unjustly sentenced to death. Don't stand back and let them die. Don't try to disclaim responsibility by saying you didn't know about it. For God, for the Most High, who knows all hearts, knows yours, white America. And He knows you knew, white America. And he will reward everyone according to his deeds. Well, that reward is not going to be blessings. It is not going to be prosperity. That reward to those of you, to all of white America, that refuses to get in the middle and defend injustice will reap justice from the mighty hand of the Most High God. Don't be mocked or don't be fooled. God, the Most High, will not be mocked. A man will reap what he sows. So the only thing that gives me peace is the Most High God is allowing this to happen. Not that it's going to convince white America that they are racist, that they live off of white uh, privilege and white supremacy. And it is not there to frustrate our so-called black brothers and sisters, our true Hebrew Israelite family members. But it is to leave white America, white evangelicals and Gentiles, without any excuse to know that injustice and white privilege in the justice system itself was created to keep us safe by unjustly locking up our so-called black family members. And let's go back to the Willie Lynch letters. And you know that Willie, when Willie Lynch first entered this country, and in, in his book it says as he went down one of the rivers, he noticed that there were quite a few slaves, black slaves that were hung from trees. And, and we, our ancestors, white ancestors, did this as a testimony as to put fear into other slaves that if you dare try to step out of line, this is what we will do to you. And so Willie Lynch said that if, if you apply the certain principles that he um, wrote in his book to the slave master, to the white system, government system, that if you apply the principles that he taught, it would be good enough to hold our blacks, so-called blacks, um, as slaves for at least 300 years. But see, the 300 years has now passed. And so, um, you know, it might be again at this point where uh, our so-called black family members, you're starting to step out of line. You're starting to think that you have equality with white people. And so now, we, instead of us really realizing we need to go back to the Willie Lynch letters, uh, and implement them again, we are doing what we did prior to him coming and we're making uh, certain uh, celebrity black individuals or anybody who's black, um, um, instead of we can't lynch you necessarily and hang you from a tree or from a pole or cut your head off and put it on a stake like we did at one point, we do what we're doing now. 
You file a false re police report and you will sit in prison for 48 years. You be a white person that files a false re police report on you as a so-called black person and, well, you know what happens. Nothing. So we know, those of us whose eyes have been opened, who are willing to embrace the reality of the white American system, that was set up for me, white men, and then white women, was never set up to include our immigrants, minorities, and specifically our so-called black brothers and sisters. And because you're starting to step out of line, and because you're starting to think that you have privilege or equality with us as whites, we need to start lynching you. We need to start letting the rest of our so-called black family members know you better get back into position. But this time, the reality is, as I said in the very first video that I put out, that the blood that will be shed in America, the blood will not be on the hands of anybody except for white Americans. Because the Most High, God, is doing everything in His power to reveal the injustices. But what is happening is white America continues to completely overlook it because their standard is not placing our so-called black brothers and sisters at equality. The standard is we are supreme. We are the privileged group, and you better recognize that you are not there. Because whenever has white America ever realized that we've done you wrong and changed our laws or our system? Never. Anything that has been changed only was changed due to you, my so-called black brothers and sisters, fighting. And even when you fought, and we had to because of that time of, of uh, being politically correct, we may have changed the, the you know, elements of the law, but the spirit behind that law has never changed, and that is why we always find our ways around it. And that is why we can take a young black man or a black individual that has so-called filed a false police report and come up with 16 reasons or felony charges against him to put him in prison for 48 years and find a white man, Paul Manafort, who did eight counts of incredible federal injustices and all these things and give him four years in prison, not even that. Because we have to remind our so-called black brothers and sisters once again Equality is not for you. You are not privileged. You are subservient to white premacy. And you better recognize that. And until you do, we're going to have to put a few of our so-called black family members, lynching them. We have to put you back, you know, your heads out on these stakes. So the rest of you will know and realize you better get back into position. But this time... These things will not happen to put you back into position. These things will happen so that when the judgment of justice falls on white America, Proverbs 24, 11 to 12, rescue those who are unjustly sentenced to death. Don't stand back and just let them die. Don't try to disclaim responsibility by saying you don't know about it. For God, who knows all hearts, knows yours, and he knows you knew, and he, the Most High, will reward everyone according to his deeds. Well, white America, what do you think is coming based off your deeds? And especially your deeds that have been done to the true chosen people of the Most High Yah. And the book of Romans said, Paul even made it very clear to us Gentiles. 
If the Most High himself did not hold back the consequences of the disobedience of his own chosen children, and because of that he gave an opportunity for us, the wild branch, to be grafted in, how much more will he not hold back his judgment upon the wild branch when they disobey the Most High and grow haughty and pride and even mistreat, as the word says, the true chosen branches of the Most High Yah, God. So you can call me white America that I'm a hater. I call myself somebody that's really trying to open your eyes and your heart to see that if you don't repent and recognize and repay and give back and rebuild what we have done to the true chosen people of the Most High, a.k.a. our so-called black brothers and sisters, that judgment of justice is going to fall. And the word makes it clear that his judgment upon the nations that hurt his children will be double of what we've done to them. <laughs> double. Take it or leave it. But to my so-called black family members, the true chosen people of the Most High, understand in your frustration that these obvious situations of white privilege that frustrates you and frustrates me and confuses us that and astonishes us that people yet cannot see the difference is not now to bring you back or to put fear in you that you better submit and get back into position in being subservient to white privilege and white supremacy, but is to reveal and give an opportunity to what for white Americans and the evangelical Gentiles to do the right thing. And when they don't, they will be left without any excuse when the fierce judgment of justice falls upon them and their families. So connect with me if you like on onelovesociety.love. It's my webpage, onelovesociety.love. If you really want to get to me, please go to my website and fill out a contact form so it goes to my email address and I will be in touch with you. So thank you for tuning in. And to my true chosen Hebrew brothers and sisters, I want to say an early Shabbat Shalom to you. May you find rest tomorrow. And may you find rest to know that the Most High has heard your cry and that your 400 years of enslavement under white supremacy in this nation is coming to an end just like it did for your ancestors in Egypt as well as those that suffered it underneath the hands of the Romans. In, his, in, in due season, we will look back in America, white America will line up right there with Egypt, Rome, as to another great nation that fell due to their disobedience in the way they treated the true chosen people of the Most High, Yah. Be blessed. Shalom.